hello and welcome to CNBC Africa in conversation with the International Free Zone Authority here in Dubai. My name is Tanya Habimana and we're about to get into a conversation to find out more about how these free zones work in Dubai and what they can offer African businesses on the continent. I'm meeting the chairman, Martin Peterson. So Martin, it's a pleasure to meet you. Um, so you are the chairman of the International Free Zone Authority here in Dubai. Now, this is one of more than 50 um, free trade zones. How do these trade zones operate here in the UAE? You have um, different kinds of, of free zone in UAE. You have special free zones like healthcare city um, and others. Um, and then you have the, the general free zones who try to accommodate from professional services, industrials and and, and trading, everything around it, and we are one of those who actually covers all more than 10,000 activities on us. Now, IFSA mm -hmm. is the, the short, the acronym IFSA, for yes, the International yes. uh, Free Zone Authority. What's unique about you? I think unique is that we try to, to be more than just a free zone. We try to cover more than just the, the basics. Mm -hmm. We try to be as we are very agile, that means whoever we are today, we will probably be different in, in, in six months' um, time because the world is changing and we are changing with it. By somehow, that means whatever the needs and demands are for uh, small businesses, large businesses, we will try to accommodate them the best. What kind of businesses do you see approaching you? Is it more small businesses, more corporates? Also, to, for us, um, it is probably what we are doing at the moment, and the majority are, are small, small businesses. Mm -hmm. It's the small entrepreneurs. Um, we are having today more than 2,000 professional partners around the world that is um, telling about the benefits of Dubai, how amazing Dubai is. Um, and, and of course, a lot of the small businesses who are on an expansion plan, um, we are pretty good fit for them. And that means you see, as we have seen, tens of thousands of companies that has been established with us over the last couple of years. Uh, are people never really thought about, uh, or it's very it's not easy when you expand. You need to yeah. know the laws, you need to understand where you're going with the money you have. But um, I think we have managed to to give them the right information that they are, they are ready to take the jump. And I, I think that's why we saw a lot of, lot of investment coming to Dubai. So I'm really sensing that you come in as a partner, that you, you work with these companies, that you guide them strategically yes. in, in establishing themselves. What would you say is the number one challenge that these businesses encounter when setting up here in the UAE? The number one challenge? Um, I think in general that is exactly what we try to, to eliminate, uh, that is that the challenges should really not be there, that they come down into a, a, a very safe environment and or to say another thing that we have trying to, to build, we are more than just, just a free zone who will give you a, a trade license, we will give you a residence visa. We are trying to create an ecosystem around it that can accommodate you. Because many, many new businesses, they, they need a little bit of support. They need more than just come in, uh, give us uh, some money, here's your trade license, and you're left alone. We try to, to, to tell them um, what the benefit is in the region, mm -hmm. where we are here, but also as well supporting them in the next step of expansion. And as we are in a pretty good location today. We have Asia, we have Africa. Um, all the airlines that are, are here, you can, we are within six hours, billions of people you can, you can reach. Dubai is a good, a good destination today. Yeah, and we hear that a lot actually. Yes. So, so we, we speak to entrepreneurs, business people, and mm -hmm. one of the reasons that keeps coming up in terms of choosing Dubai as a location is the proximity to a lot of the yes. world's um, trade and commercial centers, and also the proximity to the African continent. Yes. Um, and I'm curious to actually find out a little bit more about that. In terms of interest coming from the African continent, how do you view this? So we see more and more um, interest also from Africa. Uh, 
So we see it both ways. We see entrepreneurs from Africa mm -hmm. actually setting up companies. I think we have registered uh, more than 1,000 companies where the shareholders are from the African con uh, continent. Um, so that is positive. But we also see the other way around because we are not far away from Africa. People who want to tap into the African market but are a little bit worried. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm from Denmark, so I know a lot of Danish companies who want to be a part of that. They take the first step, they come down to Dubai, it's a little bit closer, <laughs> and then they, they tap into to the continent. And then after a while, then they take the jump and actually go in there. So also we are like halfway there. Like a pit stop. Yeah, it, it is a little bit. That's quite interesting. Mm -hmm. That's the first time I hear that. What are some of the other trends in terms of why companies and startups and entrepreneurs choose to set up shop here in Dubai? So to be honest, I, like I said, is again, grown up in Europe, been in the country here for more than 30 years. This is one of the most unique countries in the world. It has a very commercial mindset. Um, what sometimes is the lack in, in other countries. Um, here, it's, it's a part of the DNA of, of Dubai. Is this because they were forced to. If you go down and see the history of Dubai, what it was 50 years ago, it didn't have a, have a lot. Mm -hmm. So they need to be always ahead. They need to provide a platform that can attract investors. And they manage that. So when you come into an environment where you have this entrepreneurial mindset, even government entities who understand you, and whatever the government says today doesn't mean it will not be changed six months. If we can accommodate any, any idea, any company, we will change and be able to accommodate that. And this transformation that we have seen over the last 10 years has been quite remarkable. And that is why today, a little country, a little region like, like Dubai is a part of, has going up and continuously going up. Mm. The whole world is, we have a feeling, is, is coming to Dubai at the moment. Yeah, what is very nice to see. It, it does feel like that. Mm -hmm. Every time I land here, I feel like the country has completely changed. Yes, um, yes. It's just continuously, almost ahead of the game yeah. um, in so many, so many ways. And I'm curious, do you see a lot of companies that come here for the innovative aspect? Um, that the UAE offers? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. We are entering into, you see, with all the new terms, blockchain, metaverse, and all that. Um, the same there, the government is, is behind, want Dubai to be a, a center for that as well. And what does that mean? They go in, they establish authorities to want to wanna regulate that, to understand that, and again, to, to, to welcome people also with, with new ideas, new technologies. Dubai also there. Is a, is a very good platform for that. Sure, it sure mm. sounds like it. Yeah. Now, one of the things that I know about IFSA is that you put an emphasis on competence and knowledge. Yes. And you, you have an academy. Um, tell us more about this academy. How does it work and who is it intended for? So we, um, we are a pretty young free zone. We were established through an Emir decree five years ago. Um, and one of the things that I believe in is, is competence. I, I really like, I like knowledge. I like, if I have a question, I really like not just to get any answer, I like to get the right answer. Mm -hmm. So with this challenge in mind, uh, we saw very early that uh, in our expansion, first the academy was meant to be a part of putting us on a high level. So when every time we, we hire new people, that we will know that our own employees always are very well educated and understand everything we stand for and c communicate that well. So, <coughs> but very fast, um, I saw a second purpose that, that came up in academy. And that is because one of, of the way we communicate to the world, one of the way we present ourselves to the world, one of the ways we present Dubai to the world mm -hmm. is through a network of professional partners. It's something we start developed five years ago. We today have more than 2,000 professional partners all over the world. That is, is also pretty unique. That means with all those ambassadors or partners around the world, that means the message of amazing Dubai, of course, are spread much, much faster. We are always on top of that. So challenge in that with all this and still growing very, very fast is a lot of those professional partners maybe don't have the level of competence that we would like them to have. Um, so again, we need a separate entity 
to always educate and make sure that the professional partners are on the, the top, um, what you call it, because all rules and regulations change the whole time. They are always up to date. On up to date yes. yeah. So academy, that became the second part um, um, of the purpose of the academy is actually to train our, our professional partners worldwide. And that is what they're doing and, and to say pretty, pretty successful because what we've seen, especially the last year, is that the amount of investors that now comes to Dubai is because now you can go into a um, law firm in Hamburg or in uh, South Africa for that case. We also have partners in, in, in South Africa. And if you want to know about Dubai, you will talk to one of our partners in your own language. Mm. And they will be the one who can give you the information. And that means you break down the first wall and suddenly now you are more relaxed, you don't feel afraid. And the next step to actually come here becomes very short. So academy is a very important part oh, that's of that. So, that's so important and very, um, very deliberate. Mm -hmm. And what I'm sensing here is it's almost like you're going out to yes. the world and you're meeting them where yes. they are to be able to provide a service at the level um, that is of the highest standards. Now, in terms of IFSA and the future plans, where do you see um, the organization going? So there's no doubt about it that um, if you ask me today, I would probably say we have, have just started. And that's even though today uh, more than 20,000 companies has been registered the last couple of years and growing really, really, really fast. Um, we are looking into a general expansion in, in our partners. Uh, our ambition is within the next 12 months that we will have more than 5,000 partners worldwide. Wow. Now, um, thank God, the pandemic is <laughs> allowing us to travel again. Yeah. And, and that means I have a very large team doing nothing else than travel the world, uh, being a, and a lot of exhibitions and conferences and, and explaining about um, the opportunities that actually Dubai gives uh, entrepreneurs around the world. So this is a very, very, very keen part of it. Now, you mentioned COVID. Mm. I have to go there. Yes. It was hard for most of us yes. um, economically, um, from a human lives perspective, yeah. um, but also from business operations. Um, businesses stopped. Um, we saw supply chain shortages. We mm. sh the world was put to a halt. What was it like um, in your industry? So to be honest, in the, in the beginning when the pandemic started, it was, it was surreal a little bit. Uh, and, and we really saw that the wheel just stopped worldwide. But it only comes back to, again, when you are in, when everybody panicked and everybody just stopped doing anything, everybody just sat on their chair and didn't move anymore. Uh, the government here uh, didn't accept that try to, to create a platform that actually, so now comes. The pandemic was, was horrible and, and the whole world is suffering still today. But we actually managed in the pandemic to, to see the biggest growth ever. Because in the pandemic, uh, also there, we understand the challenges. We came up with, with new ways of, of, of setting up your company. We, we guided people through the pandemic and say, with any challenge, you need to understand the challenge, adapt to the challenge. Don't sit. The second you sit like a, like a rabbit when there is light, it's not good for you. You need to continue moving. And we actually did that uh, quite successfully. And we saw uh, in Dubai um, a, a boom in, in, in company formation. We have never set up so many new companies in the pandemic. And where you have 60, 70% of all the other countries, you saw a decrease. You saw people closing down. No new companies was open. And down here was, was the opposite. That is incredible. It actually were. And, and with everything, I, just as another example, um, in the frustration and the depression, because also you, it was everything new. You, you get, get depressed. Mm. We went a little bit again against the stream, what we always do. Um, <laughs> I signed an agreement as an example with, uh, with Mohammed Habtour, um, 
hub to Apollo Resort um, because we always, now I'm going into something else, we are always trying to be beyond business and we don't want it to be just boring business. Um, so we put an entertainment level to it. Polo at that time was the only sport that was allowed. So we created a, an amazing event uh, where, of course, we followed all the guidelines for the pandemic, not to, to, uh, to so of course, to respect yeah. exactly <laughs> on all that. But we still did it in a way that people still could live a little bit. So we hosted partners from around the world. We had people coming uh, to oh. Dubai, it having, having of, and of course, need to do business to understand what it was. We invited partners from all over coming to Dubai. I said, life is very depressing and all that, but life goes on. Don't sit. Continue, continue, continue. And they did. That and is such guess. an inspiring story. It's the first time I hear yeah. um, a story with a positive twist during COVID. But it actually is. But that's, again, the, the government mindset mm. is, is very, very, very different down here. Now, Martin, yes. as you're speaking, um, you, you <coughs> speak, and I'm getting personal, you speak in we um, when you're referring to Dubai, to the UAE, but you're from Denmark. Oh, that's actually true. Yeah. I really do. Yeah, yeah you do. <laughs> I mean, as, as, as an individual setting up here, how has that experience been like for you? Yeah, that's actually, uh, I came to first time to the country more than 32 years ago. Um, and the first 10, 15 years was on and off. Mm. Uh, Dubai at that time was not what it is today. Um, but, but I like the energy. And again, I like the, the mindset. I'm probably the biggest fan of, of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed for, for all the visions he's had. And, and uh, and probably that has been, been a part of even, I love my country, don't, uh, I, I really do. I'm, I'm from Denmark and it's an amazing country and all that. But, but the mindset is more close to my mindset. The entrepreneurial mindset of, du of Dubai is so unique, it, re it really is. And that's probably to a point today, 32 years after that I, I really feel myself such a big part of, of the country. Mm. Uh, I identify myself more with the country than I actually do with my own. Now when you're saying, I never thought about that. <laughs> but it's, it's actually true, yeah. And that's, that's a beautiful thing, because yeah. it speaks to the openness and the welcoming spirit that the country has. It's actually a big, big compliment to the country, yeah. Yeah. And I, to be honest, when, when you say that, can you imagine, we are, I don't know how many, 200 nationalities in this tiny little country and you have a crime rate that's literally not existing. You walk on the street. I have teenage daughters that is not afraid of, of I'm not afraid of letting them out. Mm. Um, that, is, that is also pretty unique. We, we get along, all religions, all cultures, we get along uh, extremely well. And it's, uh, that's why, yes. It feels like that's a, why true I said we, yeah. a true global village. Yeah. Um, where you, like you say, to over 200 nationalities, yes. um, different religions, different cultures, different backgrounds, yes. different types of sectors, yes. all in this one place, yeah. operating together for a common purpose. Yes. All accepting each other. Yeah. And that is actually the message also that we have, have conveying and, uh, around the world. Um, because when you, when you think about it, it's, it's, it's still a very young nation. Mm. And we are more than 8 billion people out there. And... Mm hundreds of millions of, of companies. Uh, and because of you can feel my love to the country, um, a sincere love to the country, is when you, when you convey this message around the world and you are really showcasing how amazing it is down here, it's not so difficult for people to get curious and actually coming down. And I think that is also what, what we have been seeing the last two years in pandemic. Yeah. So looking back, um, for somebody that's uh, watching the show, that's interested in finding out what, what are the first steps they could do if they were looking to set up shop as a business owner or maybe even get a job in Dubai or the UAE, what advice would you give them? So I would, um, from wherever you come from, uh, which country there is, um, and so the good thing with us is, is the wide reach of partners. I will be almost positive that uh, we will have professional partners, what we call them, uh, in the country. Uh, and of course, that could be the first thing to reach out to any of our professional partners that will give them the, the exact information, what they need. And of course, um, we also are, are open to answer any, any questions. 
and by the way, 24-7, <laughs> seven days a week. Um, because uh, again, we, we also adapt there because mm -hmm. you have different time zones, you, you have all that, and, and we are really there to, to give you the right uh, answer to the right question. Okay, that's brilliant. Mm -hmm. Now, another thing that I wanted to ask you about is when it comes to Dubai um, and the fact that there are so many cultures and nationalities mm. and um, backgrounds, how does it, what is it like to operate amongst all of this? I never saw it as a challenge, actually. Um, I, I never did. But that's probably, uh, again, because we are, we are good to listening, we are good in adapting. Ourself, uh, we are an organization also with, with all kinds of nationalities working with us. We are, have no clue how many languages is, in, is spoken with uh, our organization. So always there is a, an equal mindset to be able to, to adapt and communicate. So I never saw that actually as a, as a, cha as a challenge. Okay, that's good to hear. Yeah. <laughs> that is certainly good to hear. Now, going back to IFSA then, yes. um, you've talked a little bit about what the future look like, looks like. Um, how do you see that going into the future of Dubai? I mean, we have um, the Vision 2030, the Vision yeah. 2050. Where do you see IFSA in the future in the context of the wider Dubai of the future? So how I see, um, for sure, UAE is on a journey to, to really being the center of the world, and I, if they are not already there today, I'm sure they will, they will reach there. Mm -hmm. And of course, this journey is something that we are a part, will be a part of. And uh, we are trying to support the, um, the, country, the country's journey as much as we can. And, and that we can see already uh, today, the, the numbers of companies that we have managed to attract to, to the region is, is, is uh, I think never done, mm, done before, actually. Mm -hmm. So that means, um, like the country probably would say, they have only just started because um, they, are, they have not stopped. They are continuing, continuing, continuing. Uh, and, and the same is, is the same thing for us. We will be growing as well. Our, our expansion plans are, are pretty amb ambitious. I cannot tell you all, all about <laughs> it now. There are many of our expansion plans that is uh, not for the, the public ear or uh, yet, but there will be a lot of uh, updates during the next 12 months. A lot of very, very interesting things. Well, we'll certainly be on the lookout. Yes. But while I have you, mm -hmm. um, in terms of um, the continent, um, do, do you see any particular country or region in specific um, a specific region that has had an interest in uh, setting up a IFSA? Um, we, are, we are actually, like I said, we are receiving entrepreneurs from all over the world. I think a part of our... I said, okay, so for instance, um, Europe is very conservative. Mm -hmm. We never had, if I go five years back, we actually didn't see a lot of investment coming from Europe. The bigger organization, yes, they will always find a way, uh, but the medium and the smaller ones, not really. But the last two years where we gave this awareness to also to European countries of what it means to, to, to be down here, we saw a huge peak in, 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 in European investors com coming wow. down. So you, um, I think from, if you take nationalities, the top five na nationalities, of those five, four of them are from European countries. Sure. So Europe, we managed to, to, to really put a lot of uh, European investors down here to the region. And so then would um, Dubai and IFSA be a good strategic partner if a company were looking to create linkages with, for example, Europe or with other regions? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And that is what we do, and like I said, is we are more than just a, a free zone. We're creating an ecosystem around it, and we are, and this ecosystem is growing and growing and growing in so many entities, um, because so the world is getting smaller and smaller, and that's a simple fact. And I think there are so many opportunities that is, uh, is not really, what do you call it? Not discovered, that's the wrong word. Um, Yes, exactly. Yeah. It's not yet. And, and for instance, one of the most fascinating 
continents today and with the, probably the most opportunities today is Africa. Mm. I think Africa is, is it's so interesting and, and I know that opportunities will be there then because they are, what you said, the English word, on a untapped. <laughs> untapped. <laughs> um, so of course also we are slowly starting in there also to understand the continent a little bit more mm -hmm. because also the the tens of thousands of, of uh, companies set up under, under EFSA. We are also uh, trying to understand local laws, opportunities there, and we will also be guiding, because it goes both ways. We have a lot of entrepreneurs from Africa coming to Dubai, being here to, to see how they can expand their business to Asia, to even to back to Europe, but it also goes the other way around. We also want a lot of those entrepreneurs who now is in Dubai, mm -hmm. the continent is, is around the corner and it's very easy to, to get is. down there from Dubai. You don't feel it's so far away and there are so many opportunities in, in, in Africa. So we want to do it both ways, actually. It's, uh, it's a part of our... our DNA. DNA, ethos. yes. Well, it's yes. exciting to hear. So then this begs the question of are there specific sectors or industries that do particularly well in this climate? Yes, again there, it's uh, the beauty of it. Um, we see a lot of interest, of course, in the new technologies um, that we mentioned before, and we are trying to, to accommodate the new world of, of business. Uh, it's no doubt about that. Um, but the amazing part about it is the traditional um, concept of, of people who is in in trading um, are still a lot. And of course, the new wave uh, that happened in trading is e-commerce. E-commerce mm, became a, a new platform. And of course, uh, the pandemic supported that a lot because people could not go in uh, a mall and, and, and shop. Um, we have set up thousands of companies within the, the e-commerce. And actually, even e-commerce, not only they want to tap into the UAE, also surrounding markets. Um, but it really is cross-border, what, what I'm very happy to see. It's, it's, uh, it's not just one thing that is, that is coming down to Dubai, it's really everything and everybody is coming down to Dubai. Sure, and it's on that note that we'll end this conversation. It's not one thing that's coming to Dubai, but it's everything, everything and everybody. It yes. really sounds like a land of opportunities. Thank you so yes. much for your time, Martin, You're and for sharing so your insights. You. Um, that was Martin Peterson, the chairman of the International Free Zone Authority. And you're watching CNBC in conversation with myself, Tanya Habimana. Thank you for watching. I don't think we're talking about this.